Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. <laughs> what is your Sam Shovel detective story for tonight, Luke? I think I'll do one of my old Western cases. I call it the case of the general who opened up a drive-in and was caught selling horse meat or Custer's last hamburger stand. <laughs> well, now you're talking. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm Sam Shovel, private detective. I remember my first case. Three-eyed Maxie the murderer. He had three eyes. He was the only man in the world with 20-20-20 vision. <laughs> and there was my second case. Terrible Tony, the toughest gangster in Los Angeles. He was a bronze giant with muscles of steel and an iron fist. I had to shoot him. May he rust in peace. <laughs> Fifteen years in the detective business takes a lot out of you. But I feel as strong and vigorous as the day I started. Right now, I could tear Superman in half. But I don't want to ruin the rest of the paper. <laughs> I feel kind of thirsty. I go to the sink. This Los Angeles water is getting hotter every day. I... I glance out of my window. There's the headquarters of the Republican Club. On the window, there's a sign, GOP. I just found out what GOP means. Gone out permanently. I look down at my desk. There's my new wristwatch. My new wristwatch. It's a shockproof, non-magnetic, waterproof watch. The directions say don't take this watch out of the box. Fresh air ruins it. <laughs> I think I'll give it to my secretary. What a secretary. She got the job the hard way. The hard way. She knew how to type. <laughs> Lying next to my watch is my shotgun. I decide to see if it's loaded. I point it at the floor and pull the trigger. I look down at the floor. Mm hmm. When did I buy open toed shoes? <laughs> I reach in my coat pocket. Here's a wallet I found last night. I hope I can find the owner. I check. I check to see what's in the wallet. Here's a card. If it's found, return to Mr. Nichols. Delmar Hotel. Here's a driver's license. Here's Mr. Nichols. Delmar Hotel. Here's a birth certificate with the name Nichols. Here's the pink slip for a new Hudson sedan issued to Mr. Nichols. Delmar Hotel. Well, here's $600 in cash. Looks like I'll have to keep the money. Serves that guy right. He should carry some identification. <laughs> the name on the money is Washington. <laughs> now, let me see. Oh, yes. It's about time for my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad, to show up. Abbott had a pretty tough week chasing crooks. Monday night, he was held up on Main Street. Tuesday night, he was held up on Broadway. Wednesday night, he was held up on Sunset Boulevard. If Abbott would stay out of those saloons, he wouldn't need anybody to hold him up. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott don't have to work. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. This was okay until he found out that all the other kids had tongues. <laughs> it's not easy to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Up to the time Abbott was 19, all he could say was Rogers Brothers, 1847. <laughs> he 
Before he became a detective, Abbott was a motorcycle cop. He was the only cop on the force that had traffic eyes. Real traffic eyes. They'd always look both ways before crossing each other. <laughs> no matter what case Lieutenant Abbott goes out on, he's never stuck. Hello, Sam Shovel, private detective speaking. Hello, Sam. This is Lieutenant Abbott. Sam, what time do the vaults open in the 4th National Bank? At 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Not till 9 o'clock tomorrow morning? That's right, Lieutenant Abbott. You can't get in those vaults till 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Who wants to get in? I'm trying to get out. <laughs> Suddenly, my door opened. Sam. Sam. Sam Shovel. It was my pal, Lieutenant Abbott. He was scared to death. He was perspiring. He was sweating bullets. Lieutenant Abbott, how'd you get out of that bank vault? Sam, I'll tell it to you all in a nutshell. Can't you tell it to me here? I don't think we'd both fit in a nutshell. <laughs> Sam, I've been working on a series of bank burglaries. Monday night, the Kelly gang held up the First National Bank. Tuesday, they held up the Second National Bank. Wednesday, they held up the Third National Bank. So tonight, I was waiting for them at the Fourth National Bank. And you caught them? Nah. Tonight, they held up the First National Bank again. <laughs> But enough about myself. Enough about my trouble, Sam. Sam, you don't look good. What's the matter? I didn't get any sleep last night, Lieutenant. A burglar climbed into my bedroom window and made me get out of bed. <laughs> I stood there shivering in my long underwear. Why didn't you holler for help? He had a gun, and I was afraid to open my trap. After the burglar left, I still couldn't get any sleep. I was worried about my brother, Pat. He kept poking his head into my room. Well, lots of guys poke their heads into their brother's rooms. On the end of a stick? I... <laughs> Sam, did you hear those shots? They came from the office next door. Who rents that office next door? An organization called the American Society of Patriotic Americans for the preservation of freedom in the United States of all and for all patriotic Americans. What do they do? They're foreign spies. I... <laughs> Sam, Sam, look. There's the guy that did the shooting. He's coming in here. He's got a gun. Ah, huh? so this is the place I've been looking for, eh? Where's Sam Shovel, the private detective? What do you want with him? I'm going to kill him. I hate radio detectives. I hate them all. The Thin Man, the Fat Man, Ellery Queen. But most of all, I hate Sam Shovel. I'm going to gouge his eyes out. I'll fill him with lead. Now, who are you? Oh, I'm just an ordinary policeman. Uh, Honest, mister, I'm not a radio detective. And you? Who are you, fatso? <laughs> well, uh, I'm, uh, um, you know, it's, um... I'm the um, don't stand there, rabbit. Hand me my cookbook. <laughs> cookbook? Who are you? Don't you recognize me? Mary Margaret McBride. <laughs> oh. oh, so you're the one that gives out those recipes, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, if there's anything I hate worse than radio detectives, it's those recipe programs. I'll kill them all. I'll, I'll kill them like a hell. <laughs> Costello, are you sure the folks at home like this Sam Shovel series we're doing? Oh, certainly, Abbott. Listen to this letter. Dear Lou Costello, other radio detectives get you to listen, listen, expecting something big on their shows. Then in the end, they have nothing. You never disappoint the listener. You have nothing right from the start. <laughs> well, that's quite a compliment to our writers. Oh, sure. And I'm glad they heard that fair letter, folks. Because our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Collin, Pat Costello, Martin Ragaway, and Leonard Stern. And our producer is Charles Vander. See you all next Thursday. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>